So I've been working with young people with disabilities and additional needs for probably about 10 years through mentoring as well as through creative groups and artistic practice. One aspect of the project that I thought was uh, like really important and for me it's this ability to be able to respond to artworks in a way that doesn't privilege vision or privilege verbal interactions or privilege written interactions and that was just being able to respond with the body and like a really important reason for that is that a lot of the young people when they're working and in their day-to-day -day, um, are kind of testing the world out uh, with their body uh, kind of making movements that respond to the environment or tasting things or repetitive actions it was really important for me to not limit those interactions although that posed some challenges in the gallery space in the sense that we can't touch the artworks what we were able to do is respond physically and that's why at the, right from the planning stage I became so interested in this idea of movement and dance and how we're able to lead with our body when we're responding to the world around us. I passionately believe that the young people um, have an existing creative practice. I think even before I met them, they were engaged in a lot of creative work at Crocus Fields. And I just really want to do what um, myself and Alice Thicket, the youth coordinator, have spoken about, which is not separating out kind of young people's art group, not having outsider art, allowing different groups to view the young people's existing creative practice without it being a form of outsider art or disabled art. For me, it's this ability to self-identify across a number of groups. So I have a disability and I'm a creative. I want it to be framed as a creative practice and not viewed through a certain lens. I just want the artwork to be seen as it is and I want to destabilise a lot of the prejudices that I think happen when a group of young people with learning difficulties enter an art gallery space in the sense that young people can be noisy, behaviours are kind of not what it, what's expected in a gallery space. One thing that we've done, like you and I, Alice, um, that was really helpful, where you've taken some artwork uh, created by a group of young people that are non-verbal and share it with a group of young people that are verbal and um, in doing so just allow the artwork to have that conversation across the groups where that conversation might not be possible in a social setting. So it's trying to remove the barriers that would um, make creating artwork problematic so it's removing the need to talk about what you're doing as you're making the process it's removing the need to sit still as we're making artwork it's really simple things so it's not defining the space as a typical education space where you start in one place and you're expected to finish up in another it's allowing young people to have as many responses as they want or need to have and not limiting behaviours that could inform creative practice, I suppose. How much not limiting a young person's behaviours can impact on raising their confidence? For instance, when you're working with a young person who's, for, let's give an example, is like very loud and those noises are repetitive in a session, they would become disruptive in a session if you design that session to be such. So um, in enabling, in designing a session where you're open to disruption, you immediately remove kind of that barrier and I think that's really important. Just because I am really passionate about this approach, about working alongside young people, so having something that you're making yourself 
So using the session to be creative as an individual. So everyone within that room hopefully is a participant. We try and kind of do that as a group. Um, And just the advantages of doing that in such that when a young person's working next to someone, they don't have to ask them, like, what are you doing? They don't have to ask questions of themselves about what could I possibly do next when someone's modelling it next to them. And it's removing that need for a constant interrogation within the session. Because a lot of the young people within this group have issues with anxiety, have issues with kind of change and quick changes. And, like, just stepping back to remove the constant need for questioning what's happening in that session, or or even more importantly, removing the need to question through verbal interaction. So not requiring a young person with learning difficulties to listen to, say, me do a, a really long speech about what the session's about, and instead just doing the session alongside a young person is so important and I think support workers especially from Crocusfield have been fantastic with that because it's quite a different approach. The interrogation is still there it's just we're not writing a a thesis we're not having a, a like a verbal discussion about the artwork the interrogation exists in that moment that a young person starts to think starts to engage starts to physically test out through materials Like a great example is the wonderful film in the current exhibition uh, where young people are dancing, you know, they're they're using the rhythms of the film to respond to. They are interrogating, they're just interrogating with their body. It's a different kind of questioning.